So the Fantastic Four was cosmic rays, right? Yes. Okay. And it was some unspe- and, some yeah cosmic radiation. And it although was, it wasn't just sta- it wasn't just like your standard cosmic rays that are like always out in space. They were in some sort of big storm. Yeah. The Hulk was gamma rays. Yeah. Sometimes or gamma. Yeah, yeah, gamma radiation. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be as in like the same thing as like gamma rays on the electromagnetic spectrum or not. When I go back and I wa- probably was not meant to be thought out of that much. No, nah, probably not. But like, w- but about that, like, uh, when I go back and and watch the Hulk movies and the Captain America and these like, um, Bruce Banner thought that maybe the secret to the se- super soldier formula was in gamma radiation. Like, what would possess yes, but- him to think that? <laughs> Captain Captain America, he drank a bunch of liquid radiation, and that's what that's what turned <laughs> he, him superhuman. He got injected and then put in the pod with the Vita rays, but th- that's like not gamma radiation. And anything like <laughs> look, look at that! Damn, Co- the carnage. Radiation filters were destroyed during the workers' revolt. Bunch of pico commie socialist queers. Felt they weren't being treated fairly. Day later, the entire fucking joint's wrecked. It's like Rush Limbaugh was a general. <laughs> but that's a bit more of our backstory. There was a worker revolt. They wrecked the ra- they were radiation shield generators that the worker uprising destroyed. Who like? Now, but why would the work uprising workers do something so destructive and irresponsible? You ask. That's my question. Well. We're going to find out more about just who these workers were. Oh, man. Is there actual we... story? <laughs> I, I wasn't even trying to get Serrano in that blast. It was just a happy accident. <laughs> uh, now, what we don't find out is who, who the hell thought it was a good idea to build this resort here to begin with, radiation shielding or no. I mean, like, I just imagine, like, two guys are, walk- like, spacewalking on this planet, and they're like, you know, if not for all the horrible crap, it's actually got a pretty nice view. And the other guy's like, yeah, we should build a resort here. Don't you fret. Daddy will get you out of this scary Right now, yeah. I'm torn between getting off this rock and stomping your brains out. Keep you hammered. That choice gets a lot easier to make. Try to hurt, try to hurt this guy. Mecha Ishi will take over. He's super motivated to be as creepy as possible. Who, Serrano? Yeah. Yeah. That's like that's why I think I can totally, I can actually totally buy the idea of him hiring the unwitting daughter of one of his previous victims to be his new assassin. I guess. He's just, he's just, he's just that much of a dick. Like he's trying to be like. Like, Joker-esque, I guess. <laughs> Wanna know how I got these scars, Grayson? <laughs> I just, like, I have never understand cartoonish, e- cartoonishly evil villainy unless it's, like, just straight-up psychosis. But psychosis and competency rarely go hand-in-hand. Hand. And it's not like... Like, just anybody could be the flagship leader of a army, you know? Yeah, presumably, you must, you, have, know, you must know something or two about soldiering to be a general. You have to be a little bit competent to get where you are, to get that. Then again, to be fair, it, it, it depends on the military and the time and place. There have been some pretty shitty generals. guys that's... you got pretty high up. I mean, that's true. But, but you saw that fight back there, he was like kicking ass, so it's not like he's just some desk jockey or whatever. Right. I mean, he knows his way around a battlefield. He, he too is collected under pressure, like he's, the thing was bearing down on him, and even Ishii, Robot Ishii was panicking, like, there's no time, yeah. he's like, shut up. Move 
your lady parts. Did you ever see that mo that I... show Code Monkeys? No. It was like a. It was back when G4 was still mostly about oh. video games. Okay. It was a show produced entirely in 8 bit. About. So it was all like, like, like sprite graphics? Yeah, sprite graphics. Oh, you see that? Nice. I, you kick him, then you hit him with a drill, and off he goes. <laughs> you finally died. Fuck, finally hit that wall. Anyways, the. Um, it was like about programmers and these guys. Uh, like this. Texas oil company baron guy bought some video game company and so he's like trying to run it and he would talk like um like Serrano is now okay. and he and like at one point he's d during a doing a business meeting and he's like now nah, ladies I want to hear your ideas and then one of the women starts to speak up and he's like oh I'm sorry when I say ladies I mean I mean it as a derogatory term for the men <laughs> I, when I mean the actual ladies, you will know I'm referring to you. It was just a great accent. I don't know what about being like offensive and from the south is, but it's pretty great. <laughs> this Nick endorses Nick endorses comments of General Serrano. <laughs> pointless pointless side quest forced to shut down forced to sh I'm telling you man we're gonna have to change your identity start under a new name and also I just died I you may have some... noticed that's the reason I wasn't commentating too much on the action just then because I know I was gonna see it all again <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything I was accepting right. being the heat magnet the X-Pac <laughs> heat magnet <laughs> All right. Yeah, that is a tough. That is a tough little spot there. It looks like it. Okay, so does it not save your upgrades? So do you have to go and do them again, or are you real allocating points? Um. Uh, no, I got to Well, it wasn't an upgrade. I got, but I gotta buy. I gotta buy charges. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice chandelier up there. It is, Maybe and it's sort of... also been relatively pristine. Well, there are live wires flailing every which way. But yeah, the furniture and stuff seems to be in pretty good shape. I do question why there's all these, 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 these explosive spheres lying around the... Lying around the resort. Yeah, that's an. <laughs> that's a good question. It makes it more exciting. <laughs> I guess. They just wanted this place to be cool. In case there was ever some sort of catastrophic downfall to society, they wanted the place to be cool in the aftermath. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like. Imagine rich people going to a resort and they're like, why are there guns everywhere? Because it's more exciting this way. Oh, I guess you're right. Isn't that kind of dangerous, though? Exciting. <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the experience. Now that, um, General Serrano, <clears throat> General Serrano there is voiced by, uh, Anthony DeLongis, who was, uh, a Marshall Johnson in, uh, Red Dead Redemption. 
Wait, is that the main marshal? The one who's obsessed it's... with killing you? I don't think so. It's been a while, though. No, I think he's like he's like the sheriff of the town or something. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. Okay. Yeah. And uh he's done some other voice acting roles. He was also in a lot of those like mid to late nineties like action TV shows and bit parts, like Conan and Sinbad and Highlander. Hmm. When you said action TV shows, I immediately went to 24 for some reason. No, it predates that. Yeah. Back at, back in like, you would have been you would have been quite young at the time. But back then there was like this huge, like like well Hercules: The Legendary Journey set it off, and then there was this huge number of like, uh, like fantasy action adventure TV shows that were like made for syndic like made for like syndication for you know local stations to show on you know on like you know after on you know weekend afternoons basically. Yeah. Was it like, um, Xenon? Not yeah, Xenon. Xena. Yeah, Xena yeah, Xena was like the other really successful example of the genre. And then there but there were a lot of others. There was uh like Sinbad. I think there was a Beastmaster TV show. Was that the dude with the hawk? Yeah, that was one of his animals, yeah, he commanded a hawk. I've only seen the Beastmaster movie, and that was a long time ago. So. Um and in an age when I probably should not have been allowed to see the Beastmaster, if I'm remembering that correctly. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, there was, uh, was like Jack of Trage, which was like, I believe, which was this short-lived Bruce Campbell show. Oh, Bruce Campbell. Will you ever win? I like his voice. Oh yeah, he's got a great voice. You know they're bringing um, bringing back an evil. Uh, a, is it Evil Dead? Well, they already did that remake. Are they doing another one? They're doing no, a TV series. Really? Yeah. No With Bruce Campbell. That's interesting. Really? Yeah. How's that gonna work? Uh, he's old and still working at the grocery store. Oh, so he's gonna be it's gonna be him. He's gonna be Ash. Or... Yeah. And he's like, this is depressing, and then the zombie outbreak happens again. And he's like, yeah. That's, that's all I know. I think it's on the Stars Network, I can't remember. Has this already started? I have no idea. I remember hearing about it like a month ago. I have never heard of this. I'll have to look it up and send you the info. A lot of guys to fight in this room. What are those live wires? Are those just to kick people into? Yeah. I don't know, presumably, like, they were in the ceiling, and the ceiling got blown open or something. And there's still electricity? I guess. You know, like, it's... I guess this radiation storm could make an easy source of power. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Because like, I was going to be not? like, why is power still here? 